This morning. I'm Kate and this is Dan and we are the new lead pastors of St. Peter's. <laughs> we are, um, we're so glad to be here. Obviously, um, this wasn't the first week that we had expected. This wasn't quite how we had envisioned and planned our first Sunday to be. But actually, it's such a privilege yeah. to be here with you and be here in the city uh, for what's going on in the life of our nation at the moment. And the beauty of the message of Jesus, you know, isn't it that God's presence is with us, not only in our times of joy and our times of celebration, but also in our sadness and our mourning. So we're glad to be with you. When the news came in on Thursday, uh, the church has been open uh, pretty much since then. And we've had loads of people coming in. Some people really shaken uh, by what's going on and having wanting to give thanks for the life of the Queen. Other people, it's not so much uh, uh, that, but it's actually Actually, this has brought to the forefront for them a lot of their own unprocessed grief and sadness, and they've just needed space and time uh, to process it. And for others, actually, that's not at the forefront for them, but it is for those around them. And so it's great that we get to be together today uh, to meet with one another and to support one another and be there for uh, each other in this time. Yeah, and therefore today is an opportunity, isn't it? To, to give thanks to God um, for the Queen and her faith in Jesus and also to care for people around us in their grief and their sadness, but also and most importantly, to gather together here today to worship Jesus. So welcome here today to those welcome. in the room. Welcome to those who are online. Why don't we stand and I'm gonna pray and then we are gonna worship together. Jesus, you said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so we thank you, God, that you are the God of all comfort. And we pray that you would meet with us today. Come, Holy Spirit, come and fill us afresh and lead us as we worship you. Amen. Amen. My 
Let's take a seat. We can have a time of prayer. So good to have everyone here this morning. My name is AY, and this is my husband, Martin. We're a part of the St. Peter's family here. And we're just going to spend some time in prayer. We know it's been um, not the usual week. But there's one person we can take everything that happens to us to, and um, that's our Father in heaven. So please join us in prayer. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Let's pray together. And just like EOI said, um, our comfort is in knowing we're approaching a God that is is always ready for us to come the way we are, Um, regardless of how heavy we're feeling, just regardless of the emotion. He's ready to take us as we are. So just keep that in mind as we pray. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we, we just, we thank you. We thank you for, for the gift and the privilege of being able to come to your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you because we know your love is pure, it's full, it's complete, it's exactly what we need. And thank you because you remain the same in a world where almost everything else is changing. Father, we just take this time to pray for our nation. We pray over those who are mourning. We pray over the royal family. We pray over people around the world mourning with them. We pray even for those among us who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray for for others dealing with different forms of loss. Um, those dealing with the loss of relationships or loss of jobs. Father, we just lift every one of them to you. Your word says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. And so we just thank you because we know you're always near. You're always, you're always available. Your arms are always open for us to come as we are. And so Lord, we just speak your healing over all those who are mourning, over all those who are grieving, over all those who are dealing with loss. And we just ask that you pour out your healing over every one of their hearts. We also pray for your peace, Lord. We just ask that you flood their lives and their hearts with your peace. Thank you because you're our never-present help every time we need you. We pray this and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And God, we pray for our new king. We pray for the new leadership. There's so much transition happening in our nation. And we just ask that you strengthen him, you give him wisdom. We pray that you surround him with your love. And we thank you because you're a God who gives life. And we pray that you will help each and every one of us here to spend our days in the best ways. We're thankful for the queen and the way she spent her 96 years on earth. We ask that you would help us to spend the time we have left in the best way, in a way that makes you pleased, in a way that makes you happy. And we thank you because even though many of us are weeping, we know that joy will come. 
And we just thank you that you're a God of hope. And we pray that you fill us with hope this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thank you, A.Y. Martin, for leading our prayers. A warm welcome again to you all today. Uh, my name is Dan, and this is Kate. Hi. And we're really <laughs> excited to be with you today. This is the point where the kids, you're going to go out to your groups to have a better time, I'm sure, than we even will in here. Um, <laughs> if, you don't, if you have kids and you don't know where they need to go, all the information should come up here. There you go. Um, so, and kids, follow the crowd. And it's follow worth them in also the parents uh, checking your stickers on the kids because your kids will have aged since the summer and might have gone into a different group. Oh, and if you have a baby with you this morning, first of all, well done. You're here, <laughs> you made it, and we celebrate you. And you are more than welcome to stay in the service with your baby. But if your baby makes it clear that they would maybe rather be somewhere else, there is a baby room with a live link. And so just go through the door at the back and any of the hosts and helpers can tell you where to go. Uh, youth, that's years seven to nine uh, in... Um, uh, Oi, they're down they're here. They're down here with they Lizzie. They are a friendly bunch, so come say hello if you're, you're year seven to nine. You're staying in for the worship and then going out to your groups afterwards. Yeah. And um, for the rest of us, we're now going to share the peace, which is our opportunity to say hi to those around us. So why don't we stand again? And let's say the words as they come up on the screen. Or it might not, but it's quite easy. So maybe Yeah, it's quite easy. I'm going to say the peace of the Lord be with you. And you're going to say also, also with, with you. you. So the peace of the Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Now say hi to those around you. If you're online, do tell us how you're doing in the live chat. Let's just regather and we're going to worship together. Let's sing, come. Now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time to You are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Sing that again. Come, now is the time to i 
desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living
Stay unshaved.
for communion which we will receive later why don't we take a moment to bring before the Lord anything that we want to ask for forgiveness for in the confidence that he says if we ask for forgiveness he will give it so let's take a moment to bring before him anything we want to give him now Jesus, we thank You that there is more grace in You than there is sin in us, that You just give grace and grace and grace. And Lord, we receive Your forgiveness afresh now. Receive forgiveness in the Name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Do please take your seats. We are going to continue in our act of worship now as we take up the offering. Uh, Giving financially is one of the ways that we're able to thank Jesus for everything that He's done for us. The bags are gonna come round, but also if you'd prefer to give online, then a QR code some should come up on the screen and also the website. But also if you're a guest, please feel no obligation or a visitor from another church. Please do continue uh, just to give there. And the youth, oh, they've gone. They've the already youth, gone. They already know what they're doing. They, they don't need a, I got my little note. Tell the youth that now's the time to go to their groups. But they've gone. They've, they've gone. got it. They've it. <laughs> if you want to go with them, you're, no, you're not welcome. Um, and while uh, we take up the offering, James and Holly are going to come and tell us what's going on in the life of St. Peter's. James and Holly. Thanks, guys. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Oh, a little clap. We love 
that. Um, so good to see you. I'm Holly. This is James. We're part of the team here. And we're just going to share a bit about what's going on. So James, tell us. Yeah, it's uh, lovely to be here this morning. With you. Just to say, I'm, I've seen so many new faces here for the first time this week. And we, we just love to connect with you and specifically get you plugged into a group. So I'm aware there's a few hundred of us here uh, this morning. But the best way really to do community is with a few of us. So my group, what we do every Tuesday night, we meet together just down the road. We have dinner. We look at the Bible together. And we pray with one another. And, and there's a group for every single person in this room. So we'd love to connect with you and get you into a group as we get this uh, term going. So if you'd like to join a group, I'd just say, just come and find myself or one of the team at the Connect Station at the back. But we've also got lots and lots of students arriving. We do, yes. Over, woohoo, students. Over the next couple of weeks, thousands of students will be returning or coming for the first time um, for university. And we here at St. Peter's want to be a home away from home. So if you're a student here, come and find me. I'd love to talk to you about what we've got coming up um, over the next few months. Um, what else, James? Yeah, and just in a couple of weeks. Uh, really excited. We have Alpha. Put your hand up if you have done Alpha before. Isn't it incredible? And I would say, if you have not done Alpha, I would love to invite you to come along to Alpha in just a couple of weeks' time. But again, please find us on the Connect. And this is an amazing opportunity to reach us. Alpha is an opportunity to explore faith, life, and meaning. And we'd love to invite you to come and do that with us in just a couple of weeks. Also, next week, we are going to be having um, our big welcome lunch. We weren't able to do it today in Light of the Queen, but next week, we are going to do this. We're going to celebrate together. It's such an exciting time, a new season for us as a church. We want to get together as a family to celebrate, to meet each other again. So make sure that you are here with us next week, a lunch post at 10.30 service. Um, also, we're going to be keeping the church open this afternoon. If you do want to pay your respects, if you want to respond to what's been happening in our nation, we've got some interactive ways to do that for children as well so make sure you get involved with that too and I get um, the really exciting job of reading out some, um, I can do it, I can do it honey, I'm alright, some bands of marriage so there's some people getting married and um, I yes. think this is, this is like a legal thing I have to do so this is really really important, um, so I am uh, publishing the, oh, let me just find the right bit. The Bands of Marriage between Nathaniel Reeves Woo! and Robin Ellie Butler. Yeah. And this is the second time of asking, if you have any reason in law, in law, why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it, I imagine, now to Dan and Kate. So if you've got any reasons, come and find them after. But it's really, uh, Robin, one of our group leaders, and Nate, a part of um, the worship team. Um, so exciting getting married, I think, this month. Yes, I'm really excited. Exciting. A couple of weeks. Yeah. So exciting. Um, but why don't we um, kind of put a warm welcome together for Dan? He's going to come and show us. So, Dan, come on up. Well, a warm welcome again to those in the room and those who are joining us online as a James and Holly said, my name's Dan. Uh, I'm the new vicar here. Um, if you're wondering why Archie got shorter over the summer, it's because he's, uh, he's uh, gone to take on the post. Uh, him and Sam have gone to take on the leadership of HDB in London. And Kate and I are so glad that we get to be part of this family. And I'm really glad that we get to look at the Bible together today. And we're going to look at a passage, John chapter 14. And it'll come up on the screens, but this is Jesus in light of what's about to happen as he goes to the cross, prepping his friends, his followers. Isn't that amazing? He's going to go through something awful, and yet he spends some time to focus on his friends, to prepare them. And this is what he says to them. John chapter 14, verse 1. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so... I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And later on in that conversation, verse 15, if you love me, you will obey what I've command. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. 
but you know him for he lives in you and be and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. Amen. Amen. Wow, what a week. Uh, this definitely wasn't the first week at St. Peter's or even in Brighton that Kate and I envisioned as we planned uh, to join you. But actually, it's been such a privilege uh, to be with the church at this time and to be in Brighton at this time. Challenging times, changing times. Uh, we have a new prime minister. Uh, we have lost our queen. We have a new king. And uh, when the news came through, St. Peter's opened its doors. And I want to thank all the volunteers uh, and staff who made that possible. We've had a steady stream. Yeah. We've had a steady stream of people wanting to come in and pay their respects, to pray. And we've also had a lot of people who, for whom the events of this week have brought up for them a lot of unprocessed grief, sadness, concern, even anger and unresolved pain. I, I think for a lot of people, uh, especially the trauma of the pandemic, which I don't know about you, didn't kind of feel like it had a finish. It just sort of kind of had an unending sort of carry on. And I think the events of this last week have been a release valve for a lot of people, especially a lot of people we've had come through the doors, many for the first time and uh, wanting to pray and wanting to have somebody just listen to them. But whatever you're feeling this week, um, Jesus encounters us in our grief and he wants to prepare us for grief because we will all encounter grief in our lives. For others, actually, it might not be that you are grieving in the season, but there's people around you and you're wondering, how do I best support them? And Jesus' words are really helpful for us today. Because I think one thing we do know is that this wasn't a surprise for Jesus. He wasn't taken aback by the events of this week. And actually, a wonderful confirmation of this uh, was that the Safe Haven team, who care for the vulnerable in our community, who help create a space for those who are experiencing homelessness, at the day the Queen died, they were running a training for 50 volunteers on supporting people through grief. And the training finished just as the news came in. So it's good to know that the Holy Spirit wants to guide us. And it's good to know that the, Holy, uh, that the Safe Haven team are listening as well. And it's important for us to know that Jesus wants to equip us uh, for our own grief, but also to meet others in their time. In our reading, Jesus anticipates the grief, the confusion, and the loss that his friends are about to experience as he goes through his arrest, his trial, and then his death on a cross. He's not going to be with them much longer. And yet he says to them, he says to you today, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let your hearts be troubled. What does that mean for us today? And how do his words help us navigate life and death and help us to have a hope for the future, but also a hope that helps us help others? Well, I think what's interesting is Jesus' words speak to our past, our present, and our future. First, Jesus points to our past, and he invites us to look back with gratitude, to look back with gratitude. He says to his friends, you trust in God, you trust also in me. You trust in God, trust also in me. You trusted God with your past, and he came through, right? He didn't let you down. And he says, you can trust me in the same way. Jesus points to his own faithfulness and says, look, I was faithful to you in the past and therefore you can trust that I will be faithful to you in the future, even beyond the grave. He points to the past and he says, let's look back with gratitude because gratitude helps fuel our hope for the future. And this is helpful for us whenever we're in grief. Because part of the reason that we grieve is because that we've lost something that was worth having, something that we have and can give thanks for. It's been said, what is grief but love persevering? And it's only, we grieve because we've lost something or someone that we've loved. And one way to process grief, one way to make sure that it's not just pushed down under the surface is to look back with gratitude and give thanks. You know, for the Queen, 
one thing that I give thanks for is her faith in Jesus. The queen loved Jesus. You can see it in her writings, her speeches, and how she tried to model his form of leadership and follow him. She was a remarkable role model. Barack and Michelle Obama celebrated her reign by saying this, it was defined by grace, elegance, and a tireless work ethic, defying the odds and expectations placed on women of her generation. But for many, the enduring image of her following of Jesus is the photo of the Queen sat alone, socially distanced in the pandemic at the funeral of her husband, Prince Philip, refusing to accept a different rule for herself to everyone else. True leadership is sacrifice. And there's so much to be grateful for her in as a role model. But the other thing, her passing reminds us to be grateful for is that we really do have so much to be grateful for as a society. A king or a queen is a symbol of the society that they lead. And, you know, some people find it hard to see kind of the purpose of symbolism, but actually some of the richness that it brings is, well, one of the things is it reminds us that nations are mortal, that they flourish and then they fade. They bring things into the world and then they pass them on to the next generation as a legacy, and then we take on the baton. Human figureheads are a helpful way of remembering that society is is not really about institutions. It's not really about our big ideas, but it's about people. It's about people, and it's a reminder that our nation, like ourselves, are complicated things and in need of sacrificial love to sustain them, and importantly, desperately in need of the grace of God. So like, we don't live under any illusions that we've got things all sorted or should be the ones telling everyone else how to live their lives. But we have so much to be grateful for. Systems, safety nets, social care that mostly go unnoticed, mostly go unappreciated until they don't function as they should. But we are so blessed. We have so much to be grateful for. And in, in a time where those things, we're more aware that those things are fragile, right? Right? We're more aware that those things can be taken away and fear can start to creep in. That makes us want to batten down the hatches, give less of ourselves, and gratitude is the antidote. When Jesus says to his disciples, trust in God, trust also in me, he's saying, recall my faithfulness. I was there for you in the past. I'll be there for you in the future. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And then Jesus points to the present. At the end of his passage, Jesus says to Thomas, Thomas is really confused, he's scared, his heart is troubled. And he says he's not sure where Jesus is going. You have to love the disciples. He's been with him three years. Jesus says, you do know this. He says, I don't know this. Jesus says, you do. And he famously responds with, that's basically how my quiet times and uh, reading the Bible goes anyway. Um, Jesus famously responds, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And he doesn't just say this because he's trying to appease Thomas. He really means it. Jesus says to us today in our uncertainty and fear, Jesus says, if you want to know the pattern of life, the way to live, you find it in me. Jesus says, if you want to know the truth of who you are, you don't find it within, you find it in me. Jesus says, if you want life, meaning passion and purpose, even life beyond death, you find it in me. Jesus invites us to look up with faith, to put our faith in him for the present. And Jesus says to us, he says, look, listen to my words and then put them into practice and you'll you'll find the life that you are longing for. Possibly some of the most relevant words that Jesus taught us are this, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Why is it that blessed are those who mourn? Why is it not blessed are those who bottle things up? Blessed are those who keep calm and carry on. Those aren't Jesus' words. Why is it blessed are those who mourn? Because in mourning, we lean into our loss. And as we lean into our loss, actually we're more in touch with the reality of how life really is for most people. And as we lean into that loss, it creates a longing in our heart that makes us more willing to be open to Jesus' love for us. Because if death is always somebody else's problem, then Jesus will always be somebody else's solution. 
and leaning into our loss means that we have this longing for his love. Ultimately, this is why you're blessed when you mourn, because anything that causes the presence of God to go from being nice to being necessary is a blessing to you, is a blessing to you. And, and Jesus' comfort is not just in his provision. He does love to provide for us, but most of all, it's in his presence. That word he uses for comfort is the same word that the early followers of Jesus used to describe the experience of the Holy Spirit, that he's our comforter. He's the one who draws alongside us no matter what situation we're in and comforts us. And do you know what? The reason we encounter his presence when we mourn is not because as we mourn, it's like our, our mourning is a flag saying, hey, pay attention, or our mourning is a, is a signal flare up to him to draw his attention to us. Now, actually, it's as we mourn, we step into the reality of our lives and we discover that he's already there. See, the thing is, Jesus is more present in my sufferings then I am present in my sufferings. I'm always wanting him to airlift me out and he's already parachuted in. When we mourn, we discover his presence. And, and when we not only mourn for our own lives, but when we mourn with others, when you draw alongside others, when you comfort them, when you listen to them, love listens, love waits. As you're in that place with people this week, with your neighbours, as things are brought up, you will encounter Jesus. It's always been the way. You know, the, the women, the followers of Jesus, his friends, they, they race to the tomb as soon as they can, expecting to mourn, and instead they encounter Jesus, and he's alive. That's what happens when we mourn. And even more wonderful, do you know what? We're not only offered the presence of God, we're promised it. Jesus says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Jesus says to us in the present, look, if you want fulfillment, you find it as I help you to follow me. He invites us to look up in faith and follow him. But finally, Jesus' words point to a future to the hope that we have of an eternity with him. He invites us to look forward with hope. Do you know what? There's a lot of anxiety and uncertainty around in life. But for those who put their trust in Jesus, he says, we do not have to worry. This is what he said to them. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Now, I, I, these words have a new and fresh relevance and joy for me because um, we were overseas. We, we were living in Malaysia during the pandemic. And so we lived through uh, a pretty intense military-enforced pandemic. Our flat uh, that we lived in was quite full. My parents-in-law had just retired. They moved out to Asia to have the holiday of a lifetime, exploring Southeast Asia and landed February 2020. Uh, so instead of uh, exploring Southeast Asia, they spent six months in our flat. And uh, every room was full of people. My desk was in a cupboard. That's where I spent, spent the first lockdown. And uh, so the promise of many rooms brings me great joy, and I understand this in a new way. But more importantly, Jesus is telling us there is life after death. There is life after death. We don't know. We don't have any guarantee outside Jesus' words. And he says, I've been there. Not only I've been there, I've prepared something for you. And not only that, I'm there. Actually, what you are longing for most in your life is the presence of God. And Jesus says, I will be with you. Jesus is saying there is life after death and everything that makes life sad and hard will pass away and there will be eternal joy. How can we know? Because of what happens next in the story. Jesus is preparing his disciples for his arrest, his fake kind of trial, and then his crucifixion. And at that point, not only Jesus dies, but the hopes all the hopes they placed in Jesus, those die. It looks final. It looks futile. But then he rose again. And this is the cornerstone. This is the foundation of our faith that Jesus rose from the dead. And the promise is for all of us who are in Jesus, what God did for him in the resurrection then, 
he will do for us now. For those who are in Christ Jesus. And it's not just in the big deaths, it's in the small deaths. As we die to ourselves daily, loving our neighbor, we're promised that that is the place where you will experience resurrection life. And then when we die at the end of our days, we will rise again to live with him. And what that means is, what the resurrection of Jesus means, is that there is no area of our lives that we can legitimately look at without hope. There is hope for us. A lot of people were asking, especially in the news, if God was speaking when at the news of the Queen's death, a great double rainbow appeared over Buckingham Palace. And I suppose the answer is yes. The Bible tells us that a rainbow in the sky is a promise to remind us of the promise of God's faithfulness, that he will forgive our sin and he will get us to the other side. And the thing is, do you know what? You never get over grief. You never get over grief, but you do come through it. And Jesus' promise is that he will be with us as we go day by day through the way of grief to the other side. And he promises to lead us. And the beautiful thing about a rainbow in the sky is it happens when the sun meets the storm and sunlight is refracted through the rain. And in a nice play on words, it's a reminder that the Son of God, when he met me in the storm of my life, and went to the cross in my place, the unexpected result was life. Somehow hope surprises grief. So Jesus says to us today, you have known my faithfulness in the past. You can find fulfillment as you follow me in the present and you can have hope for the future. So do not let your hearts be troubled. Amen. Amen. And we're now going to receive that in an acted out way as we celebrate communion. But I just want to give an opportunity. Uh, maybe uh, this is your first time here. And uh, maybe you're thinking, I don't know if I have that hope. And I'm just going to pray a prayer. And if you want to echo this in your hearts, you can. It's a prayer that says, Jesus, I don't know everything, but I've kind of seen enough. I want what you've got. And, um, and then you can know that you have this hope in this life in the next. So let's pray. Jesus, I thank you that you love me and that you want to make yourself known to me. I'm sorry for the things I do that are wrong and I turn away from them now. And I thank you that you want to guide me. Holy Spirit, fill me and help me to know that I am loved. Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that for the first time, one of the ways you can respond to that is to come and receive communion now. Uh, as a sort of cementing so that you can know uh, a tangible way so you can know you have received forgiveness. You have received new life in Jesus. And so why don't we stand as we get ready to celebrate communion? And let's say the words as they come up on the screen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through Christ your Son, our Lord, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and uh, wine might be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's say together the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, proclaiming his saving death and resurrection and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. 
except through him, our great high priest. This, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat this bread and drink this cup, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom we worship you, Father Almighty. Please sit or kneel as we pray. And so as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We welcome Christians of all parts of the church here. Uh, if you receive your home church, uh, you're more than welcome to receive here today. And here we receive the bread and the wine together. You will be offered already a, uh, a pre-dipped uh, uh, wafer. And uh, here, um, all of the wine is non-alcoholic uh, for all the many good reasons. And I believe there's even gluten-free wafers at this side, I think. Um, yes, at the front. And the stewards will direct you. Um, uh, to come forwards row by row. So, as we get ready to receive, come to this table, not because you must, but because you may, not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Draw near, not because of any goodness of your own, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. So draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts with faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. Why don't we stand? The stewards will direct us and Wes and the team will lead us in worship as well. i 
love to give an opportunity for anyone who'd like to receive prayer. And so if the prayer ministry team could come forwards uh, to the front either side. During our last song, if you would like prayer for anything, uh, there's no prayer too small, that's inconvenient for God, or prayer too big, there would be a problem for Him. So we would love to pray for you uh, in this next song as we worship. So do come forward now.
never come to save us What if you had never given grace And it was love that held you there upon the cross It was love that led you to the grave Forgiven, I've been set free And all the power of Christ in me My Jesus, my victory And all the promise of Christ in me rolled away and it was love that poured into your lifeless lungs it was love that raised you from the grave continue don't let us rush you um, but we are gonna close the formal part of the service now with the blessing so let's receive God's blessing he blesses us so that we can be a blessing to those around us so may the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always Amen. 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 The prayer team will remain at the front if you want prayer. And if you're new here today, there's a team at the back, yeah. uh, the Welcome Connect stand at the back. Wait, oh, it's so far away, it's but so it is far there. Away. Uh, if you're new and want to find out more, get connected in any way. There's people at the back who would love to speak to you. And if, if you prayed that prayer for the first yeah. time, do do come and tell one of us or the person. Who come and say hi. Come and say hi. And next week, yes, don't next forget week. everything we had planned for this week. Yeah. We have majorly pivoted, and that is happening next week. The big welcome lunch after the 10:30. So come, bring your nan and your mom and your dad and your friends and everyone. Taxi drivers. Taxi drivers. Mums at the gate. Whatever it is, bring them. Let's come. Let's have pizza together, and we cannot wait to get to know you all. So God bless and have a great week.